Hello and welcome to my channel Be Yourself. This is Dr. Rajni Sharma and today I will deal with DNA replication. This is the first part and in this I will deal with the basics of DNA replication like what it needs, the proteins, the enzymes and etc etc. So let's begin. DNA is a macromolecule which stores genetic material. DNA requires a high degree of accuracy, fidelity and speed. DNA replication is semi-conservative in nature. It means uh, from a parental DNA only one strand is passed to the offspring while other strand is formed by offspring itself. It begins at the origin and usually proceeds bidirectionally as shown here. DNA synthesis proceeds in a 5' prime to 3' prime in a semi-conservative methods. Replication needs many enzymes and proteins. Now, the question is here, if DNA proceeds in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction, how can both the strands be synthesized simultaneously? This was answered by Reji Okazaki. According to him, the two strand, has a strand replicate in different manner, one having the leading strand and other having the lagging strand. In lagging strand, there is a continuous formation or the replication of DNA, while in lagging strands, there is the breakage of strand, and this strand is known as Okazaki fragments. Now, in this way, uh, the DNA can synthesize its whole or replicate itself in a particular direction that is 5 prime to 3 prime direction. Polymerase. It is a very important enzyme as it is uh, the enzyme which involved in the polymerization or we can say that the replication of DNA. It processes the strains or it adapts different uh, nucleotides in the DNA in its offspring DNA or the replicated DNA. This was discovered by author Corinne Berg in 1955. On uh, because of her his finding, polymerase is also sometimes known as Corinne Berg enzyme. The fundamental reaction carried out by polymerase enzymes is an molecule of DNMP, which is or deoxynucleotides 5 prime monophosphate plus deoxynucleotide 5 prime triphosphate. Uh, tri it then polymerizes into the N plus 1 form with the release of phosphate. It needs template of primer. Then the polymerase act on it to synthesize DNA or replicate DNA. Sometimes polymerase act on a uh, singly act on the strain and it will continue the whole process of replication but sometimes it get defragmented from the process in this in this case the number of DNA strands synthesized or the average number of nucleotides added before a polymerase dissociates is defined as processivity Proofreading activity of polymerase. As I, we know that DNA replication is very accurate and it doesn't need any, uh, uh, so it should not have any, uh, well, any mistakes because if there will be any mistakes, then it will lead to mutation or some drastic change in the, uh, in the gene or uh, in the species. Then how it comes? In polymerase, there are two sides active site and proofreading site. The proofreading site has the activity of 3', three prime to 5' prime exonucleus activity that double checks each nucleotide after it is added. And this prevents the misreading or the mispolar or we can see that it uh, provides accuracy to the replication. In case of polymerase 1, it has additional 5' prime to 3' prime exonuclease activity. If 
this strand this part of the polymerase one is removed then it is known as clonal fragment now how uh, polymerase one act or what is the speciality of this three five prime to three prime exonucleus activity in case of polymerase one it helps in the nick translation what does it mean during replication as polymerase need a primer this glenofrac or this uh, polymerase one remove this uh, primer and add up the dna in that uh, that the place and this is known as nick translation five major class of polymerase are found in e coli these are polymerase 1 which is specialized for nick translation as i have discussed polymerase 2 it is for the dna repair polymerase 3 it is the principal replication enzyme and Polymerase 4 and 5 are involved in unusual DNA repair. DNA polymerase 3, which is the principal enzyme for DNA replication, is very complex. Its polymerizing uh, activity resides in subunit alpha, proofreading in epsilon, whereas theta subunit uh, is responsible for the, uh, for the association between these two. Two core enzymes can be leaked in a complex by a dimer with the help of tau subunit. This dimeric polymerase complex can then associate with a single clamp loading complex which consists of a six units of five types as shown here or represented here. But DNA polymerase can polymerize DNA uh, with very low uh, processivity. Uh, now, here the question is, if it's a primary enzyme for the DNA replication, then how uh, this low processivity, uh, processivity will be the, uh, the factor for its primary role? The answer is that there is another beta clamp which holds the polymerase 3 to the DNA and increases its, its processivity. The primary events involved in DNA replication is as I have shown here. This is the double standard DNA. First, first, it is needed to separate. This was done by enzyme helicase. It separates the, uh, the DNA strand. Then, due to the separation, there uh, exists a topo, uh, sorry, due to this helicase activity, it creates a topological stress which is overcome by topoisomerase enzyme. The separate strains are stabilized by DNA binding proteins. Before DNA polymerase can begin synthesized DNA primer must be there must be present a template or generally short segment of RNA synthesized by primer or enzyme primase. After that Polymerase act on this and it will synthesize the its complement strand of the DNA. This was the general process for the replication of DNA. In my next video or in the second part of DNA replication, I will explain you clearly about the replication of DNA chromosomes, which proceeds in three stages: initiation, elongation, and termination. So don't forget to subscribe my channel, be yourself. Till then, goodbye.